Oh, good, the clock. Yeah. Now, we got sound and everything on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the Facebook? How do I get it? I'm going to send this to a few people. Uh, just go to his page. And okay. Yeah. It's uh, Your Home with your Alex. Your Home with Alex. Mm -hmm. okay. I just wanted to make sure. And then when you need to make sure you talk right in. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's that sound? Is that the volume good for you? It's good. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice. Your so home you look in that camera and And welcome to another edition of Your Home with Alex Guthrie. It is a beautiful, cloudy, cold, rainy day here in Big D. And I'm here with my very good friend, Miss Barbara Gilbert. So great to be here, Alex. I'm so I've glad been, to have you here. I've been looking forward to this all week. I have too. Good. I, I, Barbara is an award-winning designer, and she is going to straighten me out on a few of the things I've been doing wrong. You bet. You not, know I, I mean, will. Not that I actually. No, you never I'd do anything wrong. I never do anything wrong, but then <laughs> you haven't been talking to my wife lately. <laughs> no, if you're, that's a good thing. <laughs> so how have you been? I've been great. Staying busy. You know, Dallas is just a mecca for interior designers. Boy, it is now. So it is. It yeah. really is. It's a good time for us. So you've been doing a lot of new houses. We're doing a lot of new houses. We do a lot of new construction, you know, from the blueprints on up. Um, we do a lot of furnishings mm -hmm. uh, for the houses, too. I don't know if I told you this, but I um, I buy direct from the furniture dealers. Oh. So my clients are going to average about 25% off retail on everything, and everything is customized for them. And so the, has the furniture uh, manufacturing, has that changed much? You know, it has changed. Um, luckily, some a lot of things now are starting to come back to the United States. Mm -hmm. When things are in um, done overseas, you know, they come through customs and mm -hmm. they come in damaged. And it's it's been really a little bit trying um, because we have everything, you know, brought in direct to a receiving warehouse. So we have to take care of all the the. Yeah, you know, I remember there's there's always been times when we're like. Uh, the client's yeah. like, where is my stuff? And you're like, in Houston. Yeah, I know. It's in the ship <laughs> channel. Sorry, can't do anything about it. Now it's on the and, ocean. <laughs> and everybody's calling down. They're going, where's my stuff? Oh, it'll be there in a few months. Yeah. You know, as soon as, as soon as we find the container ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we've, we've, um, we've got such an uh, incredible amount of houses uh, being built right oh, now. Yeah. We're in this big boom. Yeah. And the, it's, it's so difficult for people to make the decisions on mm -hmm. designing them. Now, I know a lot of builders and particularly a lot of production builders, they, they give you these options, right? Yeah. So oh, you, yeah. you can go in and you can pick out of five different colors for a room. You know, you have these limited options, mm -hmm. but it's not all about that. It's when you get to the furnishings yeah. to make those selections you make work. Absolutely. You know, it, it really is about the whole thing, though, too, because um, we're going to make sure that when we're picking out the selections for the tile and the granite and, you know, all the flooring and everything that goes into the house, that it all flows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the same color, but we're going to make sure that the house flows. Mm -hmm. And then we take that into the um, furnishings aspect of it. So we do furniture floor plans. We make sure that the scale, the proportion, and everything you is right. you got to work with the lifestyle of the client. Absolutely. You know, they've got kids or dogs yeah, or, yeah. Or, or maybe parents at home and, and yeah. all kinds of stuff. You, you get to know them pretty good. We do, and it's a, it's yeah. a long relationship. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because we're in a time right now that is so fabulous. We have a lot of uh, fabrics that we use. Krypton is one. Krypton? This is Superman's all, it's cape? Superman cape, no. Krypton has I wondered been, where that thing went. <laughs> Krypton has been used for years in um, pediatric offices and geriat geriatric doctor offices. Um, so... Once something spills on it, it all just beads right up. You can bleach it. You can do really? whatever. I've never heard oh, of yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some umbrella. And it's soft. So I that's mean, why the furniture that 
if you go to the doctor when you're a kid and he's got the same furniture when you're 20. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's still there. It's still, and it lasted all that time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing, we're doing fabrics and that are family and pet friendly. Um, Sombrella, same thing. Uh -huh. Unbelievably soft and good looking fabric. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. To, on today's show, we are going to be joined uh, in just a little while by Mr. Uh, Bill uh, McWellen. I think, if, pardon me if I'm not saying that right, Bill. I know you're <laughs> listening. Uh, we're going to talk about retractable screens, mm -hmm. which um, I've had some experience with them and I love them. Mm -hmm. They're great if you can use them. He's going to call in a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the options that are available and things like that. And then in the next hour, we're going to have Frank Boyd and his partner, Rick Webster, and we're going to talk about interior home automation and entertainment systems and exterior uh, TVs and weather weatherproof TVs and things like that. That that's a whole. We used to just build boxes around them, and now you can just <laughs> now you can just leave them out in the rain. And now we have smart homes. Now They're we, not just homes, but you, they are smart. I mean, you've got to you you got to kind of know how to work your your iPhone now. You do. You to really work. do. You know, we're sitting here a little while ago. It was before you got here. I realized that I had forgot to bring my program with me that I'd worked all week on. Oh boy! And I was like, oh, man. And I called my wife and I said, you need to email that to me and you need to email it to somewhere in the station so I can print it. She sent it to my phone and I went, well, I can probably just use my phone and yeah. print it. I did all by myself. I was so proud. Did you really? I told my my <laughs> producer here, Phil Brown, I said, I'm such a big boy. I was going to say just that. Printed, I just did it off my phone. <laughs> here I am, old and feeble, and figured it all out. He was so proud of me, too. I'm he telling you, in. I'm proud of he you, He was going to give me a lollipop, but he couldn't find one because I'd already sucked on all of them. <laughs> but now we have the... Have you ever wondered about this segment? That this is the this is what happens when Alex can't sleep at night. It's scary, folks. Yes, it's scary. This, is, this happens. You know. You know how when you you kind of wake up at three in the morning oh, yeah. and you just you're laying there going counting sheep and you count and count and oh. count and then you run out of sheep and you yeah. go I might as well just get up. I do that all the time. And this happened to me the other night. So. I was sitting there wondering, and I said, I wonder who invented the first nail. No way. Alex. I did. I did. <laughs> I thought, this is a question that nobody has ever asked. Nobody's, now, I've never heard anybody ask this question. Well, I have to ask you this. Did you know how to Google it? I Googled it. You Googled I, it. I, Look at you. Like, you a are a like a big boy. Like a big boy. I Googled it. It was fun. <laughs> and there is actually history on the nail. Now, I'm not talking about fingernails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about nails that go in wood. And it was quite interesting, actually. So are you going to keep us in suspense, and we're going to wait until that segment to find out the answer? This is the segment, Barbara. <gasps> Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm almost over my cold from last week. I feel so much better. Last week, I was kind of a zombie. You sound a lot better, too. Thank you. I appreciate that because um, I've got to tell you, last week was a struggle. So anyway, uh, the first nails were made out of wrought iron in 3400 B.C. There was actually... Wow guys that used to pound them out out of bronze. And um, they're referred to in the Bible. They are, um, the Romans left tons of them when they left, whatever they left in, in, uh, the, United uh, in the United Kingdom, when they left after, I guess, after they destroyed it, whatever they did there. And um, they've gone from, you know, they used to have wooden pegs mm -hmm. when they didn't have nails. Like when they'd be at war, they'd use wooden pegs instead of nails. And um, I thought it was quite interesting because this is something, I know it sounds silly and you're thinking, what's, this is dumb, Alex. Why are you talking about this? But these are little things in, that in my worldview makes uh, or has made mankind 
grow. Absolutely. Silly little things yeah. like that that I look at and I go, man, when you start getting old, you do things like wonder about a nail. Or the other thing I did this week, which was really important. Okay. Enough of nails. You turn um, coffee cans into birdhouses. That yeah. is a worthwhile project. That is a worthwhile project. And I did that this week because, did you like my nails? I did like your nails. Okay. I, I think everybody probably enjoyed that too. I think everybody did, but um, I can't see anybody that's even on Facebook because I've got my little screen in the way, so I don't know if anybody's even even following us. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of people watching us on Facebook. Oh, well, good. And um, they're all going, enough of the nails, Alex. Okay, enough of the nails. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that I want to talk to you about, and we discussed briefly earlier before the show, is the Kitchen and Bath came out, the National Kitchen and Bath Association came out with Design trends. Yeah. And this is why I love having Barbara here. Because we've got so much to talk about with kitchen and bath design trends. Me we've got too. about a few minutes to talk about it. So they are telling us that 79, These. this is like a poll that they did during their, didn't they just recently have a, did they just have their, uh, their deal? They, they did. They did. They okay. had a, they had a, a big market. A big market, yeah. right. Where was it? Do you know? Did you go? No, I didn't go, and I'm sorry, but I don't remember. It's not telling me here in this. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Farmhouse kitchens are the most popular. Uh, I guess I did a poll with 79% of the respondents saying it was trendy to very trendy. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Is that still true? You know, farmhouse kitchens have not really taken hold here in Dallas. Um, one of the big things with farmhouse kitchens is that you don't really have a lot of upper cabinets. You have shelving that's open and you stack your dishes very neatly and so on. So you, so you can't hide anything. You can't hide anything and everything, you know, has to look pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we're still doing traditional, when I say traditional, you know, uppers and lowers in cabinets, not a traditional style, but definitely, you know, more So I've noticed in, in, uh, in Dallas in particular that a lot of what I've been seeing tons of is real contemporary houses. Absolutely. I mean, we've always been a super traditional, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call it, architecture. It's somewhere, but it's never, it's never since really the mid-century, the 50s right. and 60s, we did a lot of contemporary, right. the mid-century modern. And then we went, went it into this traditional style mm -hmm. and craftsman style. And it was heavy. The traditional was heavy. The it's, colors were dark. Mm -hmm. There was stuff everywhere mm -hmm. on all mm -hmm. the tables, accessories. And, and now so we've on. got these clean lines and these, these uh, mm -hmm. boxy square designs. Yeah, and you know we're um, we're even in when we're redoing a house is very traditional on the outside. We're doing a more what we're calling transitional. It's kind of a mix between traditional and contemporary furniture. I wondered what you called that seriously because yeah, I'm seeing that too. A transitional, yeah, yeah. so it's a mix between both. Yeah, and you can put some antiques in with it, but the colors are happier, the lines are straighter, a cleaner, not a lot of accessories around. Um, so do you think that the young, that people are tending to have less stuff? You know, I think so. And, and there is really um, psychology behind that. So they found that once the hotels started doing all these really clean bathrooms, spa-like, it's more relaxing. And they're saying that we are so connected now with the Internet and our phones and just always being connected that when you come home, you just want to have a very restful atmosphere. Not a lot of stuff around because when you have a lot of items around and it's cluttered, it makes you nervous, whether you realize it or not. Very interesting. So this whole trend started, and of course in Dallas we have a lot of influx from people from all over the country. Sure. You know, California and and and, and out west were more kind of contemporary than than we have been for a long uh -huh. time. It, it took Dallas a little while to catch up, but boy, it's on fire. Boy, it is. It's and but I, th this this 
contemporary look is what I'm seeing more and more of. And now I, and I do see a blending of it yeah. with what I'm used to and they're knocking down oh, yeah. the, the traditional looking homes yeah. and putting up these, I call them boxes, but yeah. I don't mean to, I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I know exactly what you mean. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back more with my good friend, Barbara Gilbert on your home with Alex Guthrie. Stay tuned. Okay. Here we are. Okay. We can talk now. Uh, talk to our friends on Facebook. Everybody needs to send me and Barbara a message. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> This went by pretty quick. You know, those the, like the little nail thing, it always looks good when I do it at 3 in the morning, and I'm going, that's going to be really interesting and fun. And then when I do it on the radio, I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was really interesting. <laughs> it's like, that, does, that just doesn't work. Let's just stop that one right now. Do we get a message saying that? No. Okay. Well, all right. I'm just wondering. No, my my friend uh, Kathy Morris Hall and my little sister Mary are both watching. You girls need to send us a message. Don't just watch. Play. Because <laughs> you all can hear us now on uh, Facebook. Everybody that's watching on Facebook, say hi to us. Okay, let's see. This is our 1120 break. Um, so we can, we'll continue. Uh, let's do, we can do our emails. We'll do our emails after we do this interview. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't have anything really scheduled, hard, hard scheduled. We'll do our emails when we come back. That'll fill. I would. I think that's a great idea, but I would love our Facebook people to send me some questions. Yeah, I'll do that. Pick my brain. It's yeah. free. Send I'm here. Send us questions. Email folks. Yeah. I mean, uh, Facebook folks, send us questions. We need them. We need you. <laughs> but uh, we can continue on these trends. I love talking about that. It's a, really a lot of fun. I like it, too. Yeah. I do. I have um, seen such a change. I don't know, and we'll talk about this. I really want to talk about it when we're back live, but I, I'm, I don't know who drives these trends. Is it the production builders? Is it Do they just come out and they put all these designs? Like I'm doing a, a project up in the Tribute right now, and I don't know if they do, if they're taking what people want and building it, or do they just build these? Well, there's... A lot of surveys that go out to the public, and um, I think a lot of the trends start with furnishings um, and colors. You know, a lot of it comes from fashion as well, too. So, so I just see the outside of the building. Yes, That's exactly, what I look at. Exactly. Train. And you know it's hard to stop a train. So for 30 the best seconds. heating and okay. air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, Call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020. Or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I'm here with my good friend, this is Barbara Gilbert, Hello, the, the <laughs> interior designer to call if you need your home design or assistance or whatever. Have you been to the new IKEA? I have. How do you like IKEA? You can be. You don't have to be nice. You know, I think <laughs> IKEA serves its purpose, um, but I think if you're looking for items that you really want to. You know, stand the test of time. Right. That's not where you really want to shop. I liked, I agree 100%. I like just getting ideas. Yeah, I do I too. I like going through there and just seeing how things were put together. I thought it yeah. was really interesting. Speaking of put together, now I have a confession to make. Uh huh. Okay. So, with my office, when we moved in, I just wanted some plain cubbies you know, to put in front of a window, and I wanted to put baskets in them because I have a basket and for each one of my clients. And you went to Ikea. Clients. 
We went to Ikea. <laughs> So but you didn't tell we, you cut the tags off. I cut the tags yeah, off. Of course, Nobody knows. Now. Of course now now the secret's out. But I want to tell you that those furniture has to all be put together. It's not an easy task. No, you have to read the instructions. No, you have to hire someone to do it. Uh. Because that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just called you. <laughs> I I uh, excuse me. I um told some guys uh, not long ago that if they were really good at what they were doing, they would use the French instructions, not the English instructions. There you go. I said, if you're really smart guys, you'll do it with the They French. have better pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the guys look at anyway. You know? I know it. I know. Quartz tops are the trend for surfaces. So explain to me the difference between quartz Okay. And is that, what is that quartz and mar or granite? Quartz is a man-made product. It actually has quartz in it. Quartz is, the quartz itself, like there's quartzite with granite. It's, it's kind of like a granite, but it's more like a marble. So they take the quartz from the ground and they mix it with a resin. And so it's and all man-made. So it's all man-made and it's virtually indestructible. Mm -hmm. You can set a hot pot on it. You can, you know, you can do whatever. And it and used to be, it. it used to be more expensive than a lot of the granites or most of the granites you'd commonly buy. Yeah, and and it just depends. You know, there's people don't realize, but there's different grades of quartz. Not like grades of granite, but there are certain companies that make a really good quartz. Mm -hmm. quartz. There's more quartz in it, and others, you know, skip a little well, bit. Well, it's a lot better but, than it used to be. Oh, it used to be so like you had white and beige and black. Exactly. And now you you've got some really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it look like the Calcutta marble, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we, we use it a lot. And I actually, that that trend is true in virtually all the products we're using now. Absolutely. And vinyl, mm -hmm. vinyl flooring is amazing. Mm. You may not like vinyl flooring, but the looks of it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's really come a long way. We have it in our office. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't put it in a home. Well, no, but, no, but yeah, I mean, but it's I mean, not. You're right. You're right. You know, for for a lot of people, for some situations, yeah. it's a it's a very a designer, a high end designer right. is going to kind of get not right. really go the vinyl direction. I understand, but for a lot of people, for certain situations, vinyl is a really good choice. It is, and and they have the wood look vinyl that has really come a long you, way. It's great. You can hardly tell the difference. I think difference. we still have some on the floor right we, here. We do, of course we do. <laughs> of course we know that's not real wood. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks good. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does. It does. And, and it's got a practical part to it from cost for a lot of people. And easy to keep clean. Yeah. I and mean, the maintenance yeah. is great. And I, but still, but still, you can't beat granite. You can't beat natural stone. I don't think it's ever going to go out of style. No, it, it won't. And, you know, we combine the two in kitchens. So we're, we're doing a house now. Uh, it's being built. And we really want a big wow factor for the island is 11 feet long. We're, That's huge. Large islands are really, really in. You could sleep two on that You thing. could sleep two on that. I mean, you could have a bunch of people. You know, workstation. Are you using there. these big giant sinks? We are. You know what we're doing? We're doing a five foot galley sink. Get out the of here. The galley sink. Yeah. That thing, if, if, if That's you've a not bathtub. seen it, I know, I know. It's crazy. And it comes with, do you remember when we did the eco house? We uh -huh, had one in there. Uh -huh. So it comes with all of these, um, tools that go along with it right so there's a partition that you can put in it and you fill your sink with ice and you could keep shrimp cold on it or you could use it for drinks it's got a colander it's got cutting boards i mean it it it, it almost does everything it's a gourmet it it's is a, a gourmet. gourmet kitchen it's a gourmet kitchen. it turns that whole so yes. you can actually set a kitchen up where one side you could have like if you're catering yeah a, a party sure you could service on one side of the mm -hmm. island, uh, cooking on the other side of the island absolutely, or something absolutely. where you have flow. Right. But we were talking about the granite. Mm -hmm. So we want this. We're going to waterfall it, which means the granite comes all the way down the sides mm -hmm. to the floor. Um, and we want a real wow factor. So we picked out a beautiful granite. And then the perimeter cabinets, we're going to do just the quartz. 
Interesting. Yeah, so the so, island the island top is different than yep. the, the perimeter. We're cabinets. using a leather, you know, granite, um, and it should be very easy to maintain. And then and then the perimeter cabinets. So there was a trend a mm -hmm. few years ago, may still be, where you would do a different finish on some of the cat like you might do the island cabinet a different finish than the perimeter cabinets. Right. And we are still doing that, but now we're doing uppers and lowers mm -hmm. in different colors awesome we just did, did a kitchen with white uppers and gray lowers when we come back we'll have more with barbara stay tuned to your home with alex guthrie okay good segment thank you You know me, I can just talk for hours about this stuff. <laughs> no, that's good. I'm going to get some water. I wanted to let Amy know that we're streaming this live. I yeah. don't know either I forgot or you forgot to tell me. I oh. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all you Facebook people, send us questions, all two of you. <laughs> Hello to both of you. <laughs> Last week we had a crowd. Well, people are sleeping in because of the weather today. It's a little rainy. A so little they should be on their computer, so, and this you know. thing's going. Hey. Balance of nature's fruits and veggies. I don't know why I told him 11. Hopefully he'll call in a few minutes early. I'm just, you know, I this, know you're still. It, it's just, well, it comes and goes. It's really weird. And I know. I, I was at the doctor yesterday, and he was, he was like, "God, you're so much better." I was, because yeah. I don't know. Have you had this yet? Did I tell you about my husband? No. He got sick the Friday before New Year's, and I mean, he was not getting better. He went to the doctor. Doctor gave him Z pack. Didn't help. Um, I finally had to take him to the emergency room Ugh. and they tested him for the flu and said it wasn't the flu, but I have never seen him so sick and they gave him a steroid shot and then some steroids um, helped a little bit. They also gave him some I an IV and, and so on, but Alex, it took over a month, uh -huh. over a month for him to get well. Uh -huh. Yeah, this, this has been two weeks for me. Yeah. And um <laughs> I, I, it hit me really hard last week, and um, it just lingers. It does. It, it Choosing does. the right mortgage lender involves much more than just a rate. Quicken Loans has earned 11 J.D. Power Awards for client satisfaction, and we invented Rocket Mortgage, a simpler, hassle-free way to get a mortgage Mike completely Chapman, online. Thank you no so one much else for joining like us. It. We're so glad so you're here Quicken today. Loans. America's Send number one online lender. Something. Call Quicken Loans today at 800 uh, Quicken howdy. or go to rocketmortgage.com. That's 800 Quicken. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 3030. 
<laughs> when it comes to DIY, Alex Guthrie is your guy. What a bad rhyme. The phone lines are open at 214-810-TALK. That's 214-810-TALK. Relax your home with Alex Guthrie. And welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. Well, my friend Barbara and I were just talking about things you do in the kitchen other than cook. That's right. And in a few minutes, we're going to be joined by uh, Bill, and we're going to talk about uh, retractable screens. And I I asked him to call in at 1135, which is about a minute too late. (laughs) That's my my bad. But uh, at any rate, um, we were talking about uh, kind of trends in kitchens. And one of the things that this uh, survey is talking about is undermount sinks. Do you do? Um, I've noticed lately with these really big sinks, I'm doing a lot more sit down, mm-hmm. you know, overmount sinks than I was. But we used to do a lot of them because in the old days, of course, we tiled the tops, right. which we don't right. that much anymore. Yeah. Definitely undermount sinks, yeah. and even single bowl sinks have become uh, popular again. You know, there's a in the kitchen. Yeah, in in the kitchen, there's a uh, sink now that people love. It's a granite composite sink. Huh. So, and it comes in some great colors, but it's got granite in it, and it's virtually indestructible. It doesn't scratch. It doesn't stain. A granite it's composite. composite sink. Yeah. Is it all the same material? It's all the same material. Um, you can buy it in white, beige, gray, browns, you know, it's, uh, but yeah. And, and they do have them where they're a dual bowl sink and you can select sizes and so on. Um, but it's, it's a fabulous thing. So when you have a single bowl sink, do you have the, the disposer in the center of it or would you have that off to one side? You How can would do you, it either way, whatever you, whatever what, you what would a What would someone prefer? Where you, if you, you know, like we like to soak, like we like to have one side maybe mm-hmm. soaking right. and the other side not. Right. How does that work if you have just one big single bowl or do you just not do that? You just don't do it. So does anybody hand wash dishes anymore? Um, not that I know of. I mean, I do. <laughs> do I you do. really? Yeah. I mean, we'll sometimes hate, rinse something. I out hate of it. dishwashers. I hate them. Do you really? I. You know what I love about the dishwasher? I know that everything is sterilized. <laughs> sterilized. Well, come on. You need to go to a no. dear lease for a few days. My husband does that. Well, I know. Sterilization but... is way overrated, man. You can eat right off the dirt if you want. I'll bet you you don't use this antibiotic soap or anything either, do you, what? Alex? What's that? Anti- <laughs> <laughs> I've been sick for two weeks. Who needs that stuff? (laughs) Hey, I lived. No, I, I, because it's just my wife and I, right? Yeah. There's just two of us. Just my husband and I. And so I keep going, why don't we get rid of all the plates, but two? That's all we need. Just do two plates, use it, wash it, put it in in two forks. And and then what are you going to do if you have company? Don't paper plate. Don't invite them. Tell them to bring their well, own, bring your own yeah. plates. Yeah, bring your own plates. Well, you could you could do the same thing with the silverware then. Why and glasses? Why plastic? Just, yeah. Pla- hey, that stuff looks real. It some of it does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd like to hear from some of our yeah. Facebook people. I'm if, sure if somebody they, has. I'm if sure they actually somebody use has, the has, some, enough. has some really good ideas about that. <laughs> but uh, no, I I. The, the problem is, is by the time we get the dishwasher full, it's three or four days or, or a week. and well, Or you have minute, to run I don't, it. I don't understand. Do you eat out a lot? Oh. We, we run ours like, you know, like at least every two days. Really? I mean, if you eat breakfast, lunch, you know, dinner. Well, I think the problem, you, I think the problem at my house is that I, I get bored and I clean the dishes. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, I'll just go. I thought maybe you're just eating out of chip bags and that kind no, of thing. No, 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 no. My <laughs> wife eats out of the chip bags um, because that's all. I'm here. here. Dinner's right. ready. <laughs> Have some dip, too. <laughs> here, here's the bean dip. There you go. No, we, we, uh, we just don't, 
you know, as you as you kind of the house gets empty, you don't cook as much either. I don't think. I mean, we don't. We, or you order out. Maybe we just order out more. Maybe so. But white and gray are still the most popular colors for kitchens, while blue, 52%, and black, 41%, and beige, 40% follow. Is that true? Yeah. I would say it's right on. Um, you know, we're doing, so I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing a lot of cabinet uppers in one color and then the lowers in another color. But um, it's white and gray is really what, what people want. And then blue. And I'll tell you what's coming back now, big time, is black. Really? We're seeing some black tile. Um, we're seeing black um, plumbing fixtures. Black is really coming in pretty strong. I don't know how long it will last. I but... just did a bathroom, and we did dark colors. And um, it is... You know, dark. I'm a to a guy. Guys don't care about colors so much. You know, to me, yeah. it's it, it's easier to dark colors. You know, a guy thinks about cars, right? Right, right. So it's like and dear leases, honey, and that kind honey, of thing. Honey, what color do you want your bathroom? Well, I don't know. My Chevy's white. Yeah, that'll work. White, white, <laughs> white. <laughs> you know, it's easier to keep my Chevy clean because it's white. Let's do it in white. <laughs> um, that's that's kind of how guys think. But this guy that I did the bathroom for, he wanted it dark in three different colors. Dark. Mm -hmm. It was pretty. I was I was like, wow. I did you like it? Um, luckily, well, I mean, I, yeah. I'm fine with it if he's fine with it. You All know, right. I'm just the contractor. <laughs> I don't really care. But um, yeah, it looks fine. It looks okay. To me, dark colors, for, from my perspective as the contractor, dark colors are not forgiving. And so you have to be really mm -hmm. careful with when you're initially doing it, when you're, when you're building it. Mm -hmm. um, I love light colors because if there's a flaw somewhere, yeah. it doesn't show up as bad. And, and I, I don't mean that to sound like I put things together that aren't perfect, but things aren't always perfect. Right, right. And so when you do uh, dark colors, it, it is going to cost a little more to the customer because we're going to have to maybe put an extra coat of paint on it mm -hmm. or do a, a little extra prep work because when we get finished, where we wouldn't normally see right. a tiny little flaw with that dark color, we will. Well, it's true. Even with the texture on the walls, you exactly. know, you paint something dark, you notice that more. The other thing about dark colors too is that um, dark colors make a room look smaller. They sure do. Whether it's cabinets mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, something light will make will reflect the light, and the dark colors make the room kind of recede. We used to, back in, way back in the day, use hard shiny lacquer on walls yeah i mean there was a time when we were doing that it was a trend oh it was a nightmare it is a nightmare <laughs> but you know talking about walls people now want level four and level five mm -hmm. no you know no mud on it at all no right. texture at all right right yeah and it's they want it smooth as glass and it's um, hard it's a hard thing to do, and it's a hard thing to maintain over time because you don't have a perfect structure. It's expensive, too, Alex. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe what it adds uh, the cost to a, right. a new home. Right, sure. There's a whole lot more prep that has to go yeah, on, and you've yeah. got to have a person in there doing it that understands what they're doing. Yeah. I walk into houses, new houses now, and I'm surprised at the uh, lack of quality Oh, yeah. And I'm not trying to be critical of the guys doing it, but the guys doing it don't aren't trained properly. Mm -hmm. And the guys supervising it aren't making them right. do it right. Right. And I and I and I just catch it. Hey, I've got a few emails this week. And I think uh, one of them that I wanted to read came from Shannon. Because last week I was giving out some information, and Shannon uh, was a little bit uh, perturbed with me. And I don't blame her, because last week I just wasn't quite with it. And I gave out information on a device called a U, uh, Upspring 911. And it is basically a little solar-powered emergency radio. Oh. 
Oh. But it also is a, it's a radio and a flashlight, and it's got a little charger for your phone where you plug your phone in. It's got a little USB plug in, and that's awesome. It's a little emergency yeah. thing that you would keep in your car or in your closet. I need one of those. Yeah, everybody should have yeah. one. It's got a little crank on it too. Oh, and so, what does the crank do? Well, gives it a little charge. Oh, I see. You have to crank it. Okay. So if you were like listening to for emergency weather information, you would kind of crank it. Okay. You know. Um, and so I didn't do a really good job of giving out the information on where to buy it. I still don't really know what they cost because I looked it up on the website and I couldn't. They don't give information about the cost. I don't think they're very expensive. But uh, Shannon, here's the email says, please give us the information on the emergency radio you were talking about last week. Thanks, Shannon. P.S. Love your show. And I love you, Shannon. Thank you for saying that. It's called an Upspring, U-P-S-P-R-I-N-G, 911. And the website is www.buyupspring911.com. And... Uh, there's a little note here that I wrote at 3 o'clock in the morning. Everyone should have one of these in your car or house. Or so can we put that information on, the, on you know, your Facebook page? I will do that. Thank yeah, you. I yeah, I think that'd be great. I will do that. Okay. I will do that. It's a great idea. I have another email, and this is something that I think Miss Barbara can help Carla P. out. I'm happy to. Alex. My husband and I are arguing over what color to paint the bathroom. He wants the woodwork dark, and I want it light. I want wallpaper. He hates wallpaper and says it's old-fashioned. Help! Thanks for the show, Carla P. <laughs> this is a universal car problem, Carla. It's, it's not just unique to you. So I have a system that I do with my clients. Um, whenever we're we're you know, designing for a husband and wife or whatever, we used a 10, one to 10 system. 10, I absolutely hate it. One, I love it. So if there's a color that one of them doesn't like, I say, okay, where are you on the scale? And if they say a seven or an eight, then we know it needs to be reselected. But if they're at a two or a three, then, um, you know, we, we can go with it. So so that's what we do. We kind of scale everything on that scale. And if if, if maybe you could find something in the middle. That's a I guess great is what I'm system. Saying. I love the idea. Yeah, of that. yeah. And I and I do that initially when we meet with the clients and they're signing the letter of agreement. We go over this because there's got to be a place for compromise. Mm -hmm. So you, know? you you see, I make them draw straws. <laughs> You know that would probably be yeah. easier. And then we ha and then we set up a little one of those little plastic pools. Yeah. And we fill it with Jello, and they have you know a wrestling Jello wrestling oh, in the wow. middle, and whoever oh, okay. whoever wins, they get their color. The problem is I don't want my office getting messed up like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, but that system actually works, you know, no. because then we say okay, we need to compromise. And, so and everybody picks their highest priority on the scale. Yeah. And then we just kind of average it out well and if you and i are saying you know you love that color and you're at a one or a two but i absolutely i'm at a five or a six like i don't like it but i don't love it well maybe that's a place to compromise i think that's awesome right so and then the, we say okay so let's did compromise. you like teach fifth grade at one time in your life or something no but you know but what? you had kids i i have kids yes. okay and well, grandkids okay okay so I, I know where that came from <laughs> because sometimes dealing with our clients it's kind of like dealing with kids. I agree. What about wallpaper? Wallpaper is back with a vengeance. Is it really? Oh, my gosh. We are using so much wallpaper. It's different than what you're thinking about in the 80s or your grandma's home or whatever. A lot of it has texture to it, a little bit of sparkle. Grass cloth is back. Uh -huh. You know, we, we took down so much grass cloth, and now it's back with a vengeance. What about wallpaper hangers? Um, are they hard to find? They are hard to find. We have a really, really good one. It seems like it's use, a lost that, art. Yeah, it, a lot of the, the wallpaper mills went out of business, mm -hmm. um, and now, and it's it's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's when you're going to put up wallpaper, it's expensive because the prep work is very expensive, and the wallpaper itself. What is are expensive. the do's and don'ts with wallpaper? Give me a couple of do's, a couple of don'ts, as far as like. 
the the type of you know we used to do a whole lot of the foil type wallpaper. Yeah, we're not really doing foil, but but I would say make sure that your walls are really really smooth mm -hmm. because it'll show every single imp imperfection. Um, and then you know with wallpaper, if you want to do an accent wall, you can go a little crazy with color. Um, because we're doing a lot of it behind beds. We're definitely putting it in powder rooms, entry halls. Are there a lot of new designs that are oh, a lot yeah. more friendly? Oh, yeah. A lot more fun? Oh, yeah. Very fun. Geometric prints. and you know, There's some for traditional, too, though. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about designing your home with my most wonderful friend, expert, Barbara Gilbert, you're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Stay tuned. Great. Awesome. Awesomeness. So every time you look out your windows, the world looks a little... Wow, you don't sound too good. I'm fine. Are you taking any Mucinex? I did, but my doctor put me on Claritin. What do you change your personnel? We need to change your personnel. Are, are you, no, when do you oh, oh, uh, when we when we switch over hour. Next hour. Mm -hmm. Great to see you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. This is John David I'm Wells. Wells. Nice to meet you. And uh, hey, gentlemen. Hey. And you're sounding great. Thank you. You back. I will do it, sir. Fun. It is fun. Isn't this fun? Yeah. I think what I'm going to have to do with them is uh, because they're kind of like two different things at the same thing, and we'll just have one of them do his. First half hour one, and then one in the second half hour? Well, we'll probably just do segment. Se probably do both of them in the same, same segment. We're not going to do a whole hour with them, I don't think. Okay. I don't think they well, have that much. take that chair mm -hmm. and put the other one over here. Okay. Okay, and we can then back this up. Mm -hmm. We back this up and get a three shot. You'll have to squeeze in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just have one of them on the mic at a time. She's going to stay. So I'll just have one of them on the mic at a time. That's all I was planning on. Oh. Yeah. Okay. She's staying. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and set it up then. Yeah, why not? Let me go ahead and set it up then. And these are mine, so I need to get these out of here. I'm so glad I left these here. I am too. Because I was looking for them this morning. I, I should have called you, but, I, but they actually got pressed into service a couple of times. Well, that's you good. Know. I'm glad someone was here. You want me to use number three? Yeah, just whichever one. Three? Yes, because one's dead. I've got to get another one of those. Actually, I need two more. Mm -hmm. I need to get two more of those because one of, they keep breaking. Well, that's just awful. Yeah. We're having fun. <laughs> Are we still yes. streaming live? Yeah. Oh, great. I just put my lipstick on. It's and a oh, yes. train. And you know it's hard to stop a train. <laughs> so for the best heating You know, the fun part of it is they always North the Dallas and Plano for the past 60 <laughs> okay. years. Call my friends at Total Air and Heat. I have a two eight eight one minutes and then we go. That's nine seven two eight eight one zero zero two zero, or visit them online at totalair.com. Total Air and Heat. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I have one more email. I think we can get in here real quick. This is from Paul. Okay. You know, men have problems too. Well, of course. I mean, of when course. it comes to the home, I know we just don't always have the all the answers. We try. You think you do. We're though. supposed you to. You think you do. We we we're dependent on. <laughs> Especially when it comes to <laughs> windows and doors and manly things. There you, you go. know, roofs, windows, doors, plumbing. We're air conditioning. Air conditioning. We're supposed to know these yeah. things, but we just don't. 
Alex, my wife and I are going to replace our bay window in the rear of our house and can't decide whether or not to go with grids or not. Grids are, can be very confusing. <laughs> the rest of the windows have grids, but they're getting old and will need to be replaced in the next few years. We can't afford to replace all the windows at once. What is your recommendation? So, you know, I run into this a lot these days yeah. because... I'm not crazy about grids on windows right. anymore because they block the view. They do. I they agree. limit your design options, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. And nowadays, when you have a house and you've got thousands of dollars of landscaping that's beautiful mm -hmm. or a swimming pool or whatever it is you have on the outside, you want to see it. And you want to – and I – I'm sure you do this with your design. I know that I do this when I'm advising people. Mm -hmm. That becomes a, that window is framing, it's like a picture, framing mm -hmm. a picture inside the house. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring that land, that look in as part of the design right. inside the house. Right. Get rid of the grids is always mm -hmm. my recommendation. Just don't have them. Does it bother you if a house has a window or two without grids and then other windows with them? I think if you're gonna if it's in the front of the house, then they should all be, be consistent. Okay. They should match. If it's in the back of the house or the side of the house, who cares? Right. But the front of the house, you know, for aesthetics, yes. So we're doing a what I've told people in the past. Like this guy, Paul. Thanks for writing me, Paul. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> um, this house, this guy has a house, and your house has, let's just say, four sides mm -hmm. north, east, south, and west. North, east, north, south, east, and west. Okay. That's our. That's four. Our, That's four. You got on it. On our planet, there's four it. directions. You got it. Only still. Um, <laughs> what kind of medication are you taking, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> we must have fun. Um, and I will tell them, if you don't have the budget to replace all the windows, pick a side. Yeah. Because a lot of times, if you pick a good brand of windows, and particularly a brand that's been around for a long time, then you can come back in two years and get that same brand of windows and match it and do and do the other side. You know, that's that's really a good idea. And I would suggest starting with the west side. That's a great idea. Because of all the sun. Mm -hmm. The windows they have out today are so much more energy efficient yeah. that um, probably, you know, would really help uh, with the with the savings. Mm -hmm. it, it does, and comfort. Energy. Yeah, comfort. And, and it just kind of depends because sometimes you're replacing them because you have to. Right. And you always obviously when you're working on your house you always want to upgrade you're not sure. doing it to make a lateral move necessary sometimes you are you know right. if you have to but usually you're doing it uh to up to upgrade and you should be doing it mm -hmm. to upgrade so um that my suggestion to paul is that you would go ahead and and not worry about the grids particularly a big old bay window that looks out the backyard and you want to see more of what you're paying for back there. I agree with that totally. Okay. All right, that's the emails. And I, got, I have a couple more. I was going to, this uh, one of the other trends that they were talking about was wall-mounted flat screens. I'm going to talk about our next guest, with, uh, about that with our next mm -hmm. guest. But here's something that, was trending in kitchens, and I'm not sure how much it's taken off. The two things, induction and steam cooking. Oh, two of my favorite things. I love induction. Induction is amazing. You know, we did a remodel. So for... let's explain what induction okay. is. So induction, um, you have to have certain types of uh, pots and pans for that because mm -hmm. it works through magnets. So induction is, is a, a, heat, a heating element. Right. And it's got a flat top. Like, like an electric, electric. Like an electric exactly, burner. Exactly. Exactly. But you can boil water in about 18 seconds. Right. The great thing about induction is that um, it doesn't get hot. The top 
the cooktop really doesn't get hot. And you can put down, say you want to fry bacon or fry chicken or do something like that, you can actually put newspaper or a silicone pad on it to keep it clean while you're cooking, and it'll cook right through that. And it doesn't burn the paper. No, yeah. Right. No, it, it doesn't it burn, burn It just goes yeah. right through. Now, you know, I've never tried that. I use induction. Oh, you I do? just have the little single burners, and I love that thing. Yeah. You know. Oh. We're going to take a break. Going to get some news in. We're going to make some money. Yay. And we're going to be back after that with more of Your Home with Alex Guthrie. So don't go away. We'll be back. You know, talking about the induction. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't make them in large sizes. No. So that's the bad thing. If somebody you know wants to replace a you know forty-eight inch cooktop or larger, you can't get them. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think that they are working on that though. All ah. right. That was a good hour. A yeah. Quick hour. It went, it went by very quickly. But we have a lot of good energy together. Yeah, we, we do. do. We We're do. We're rocking it. So do we have another person that's come on Facebook? What? We do. Chris Miles. Oh, it's Chris Miles? I don't know if I am watching this live right now. You see. Is it Chris? Yes, I see it, you big dope. Hi, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear us, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, Alex. I'm Hi. Here. How are you? Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Hey, hey, man, long time to Why don't you grab a chair? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, since we're doing the inside and the outside, let's just do one of you and then do the other one. Okay. Will that, will that be all right? Well, we're, that's what we're going to talk to you about is we're going to focus mainly on Siegel. Okay. It's, it's weatherproof TVs. Okay. I was supposed to call you last night. You, know. you were supposed to call me. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well. Yeah. You, you can sit in. And, that's fine. You can know. sit in his lap. Do you, I don't care. Would you like to sit there? No. Well, no, we'll, we'll just gonna, we'll, yeah, oh, okay. we'll just let him sit yeah, over right, there. Yeah, Do you want me to? Okay, so cut over. Do we have another set of cans? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Come on over, man. Come on over here, Franklin. Never you didn't here call me last night. Yeah, you're right. Without. Y'all just have to share. No, nah, we'll make it work. Right here. We'll and you got to make sure you get right up on here when so we're sharing. Six inches or so? Yeah, six inches. So you just want to talk about your outside TVs? Primarily. We kind of, I don't know how much time it's going to take. Okay. To cover that. What are we, how much time do we have? About 45 minutes total? For commercial Not if we're just talking about TV. Well, that is not going to work. I mean, we're not going to be able to get 45 minutes. Yeah. It's a good thing. Well, yours, you don't have any. Yeah, go ahead and pull my hair <laughs> all you want. Well, there's only one. No, there's, there's only one. That's, yeah, that one doesn't, that work. One doesn't work. So, uh, um, I don't know what to do with that, buddy. Is there a way you can break it up into like a like a segment like one yeah well, one of you do like have. one part of it mm -hmm. and then switch and the other one of you do the other part well we're gonna do you a little know, back and yeah, forth I mean, but yeah i mean you'll be able to hear one another yeah so you'll be able to hear you don't even really need it it's not really like you it's not like we're gonna have anything that's coming down yeah right? let's just we'll just go without the cans all together yeah all right you can put them on i i can hear me I'll try to use my best radio. Okay. As long as we're getting Barbara, because she's the only one that looks like she should be on camera. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Otherwise, it kind of looks like a jailbreak. Huh? I'm sorry. That's this me. is Barbara, Barbara Gilbert. Gilbert. This is Frank nice Boyd. Hi. Rick I'm Webster. I'm an interior designer. Oh, wonderful. So, wonderful. Yeah. 
It looks like it looks like a bunch of guys that broke out of prison in here. Like, what's that show? <laughs> prison Break. Prison Break. Exactly. <laughs> test, test, test. You do have to get pretty close, Frank, when it's time to talk. So, like that. Yeah, yeah, like a rock and roll star, like you're the backup singer. You just lean in and. Okay. Yeah, don't be afraid to grab it and just get on after. Get, get, yeah, don't move it. Just leave it right just there. Right there. And you just get on in there. All right, we'll, we'll get real comfortable. So there's our talk track. Uh, you got the questions that I submitted, right? Which one? Chris said, hello, Barbara. Hi, Chris. How are you? <laughs> well, oh, Chris Miles? <coughs> Chris, Chris was... Um, I don't know if this is helpful or not. Chris, we need to get together for lunch soon. What I, what I do that Chris kind of um, was uh, yelling at me a uh, couple weeks ago because he didn't he couldn't see the guest, you know. Oh. Well, he was, uh, I'm telling on you, Chris, he was watching the previous week's show on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> your home is he your texting back and forth right now? Would you need a phone uh, or just rated bots? What's that? So is your he texting home. back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's watching us live. Right now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, hey, Chris. Chris Miles. He's from the HBA, DBA. Chris is my old partner. Hey, we're back. We're back with Euro with Alex Guthrie. Sorry, guys, we're in here chatting. I wasn't keeping up. Welcome back. Um, we're here with uh, my good friend Frank Boyd. He is the CEO of Boyd on a Wire. And um, boy, he put a long paragraph in here that I'm just not going to read. <laughs> Why don't That's you tell Alex us? And, and, Rick, and, and Rick, That's the Alex, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember Frank. That's all I can tell you. And, and Rick Webster and Rick, uh, Rick and uh, Frank work together, and right. and you guys have a, a an outdoor product. And, and of course, Barbara's still here with us. Everybody, <laughs> I'm still here. Last but not uh, least. So you guys uh, wanted to tell us about your all weather outdoor entertainment system or TV or what is it? Sea yeah, Lock? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, uh, Sea Lock is actually the manufacturer of the world's finest outdoor and weatherproof TVs, entertainment systems, and remote control systems. And well, so you're doing, this is just a product that you're going to, that you put out on a, like if you're going to have a patio. Correct. So instead of building a waterproof box around it anymore, this is something that you can actually just leave out in the weather. Exactly right. Put it on top of the fireplace. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll get into the details of it a little bit later, but that's the, the basic premise of it is instead of having to buy a big, ugly TV in a box, mm -hmm. you actually have a TV that looks like a regular TV, but it's actually weatherproof. So how? Uh, so is it, so it's not as it's not susceptible to the lightning and 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 power surges and all that kind of stuff that that you well you know that's a big problem that we used to have with them. Oh, I know. Down yeah, in the, uh, yeah. the Preston Hollow area has a lot of brownouts and right, power right, shows. right. So from a power perspective, you still have to protect that with a surge protector okay. or power conditioner okay. or UPS battery backup, anything like that to limit that spike from making it to your equipment mm -hmm. because pretty much everything electronic is susceptible to spikes mm -hmm. and even blackouts are the worst but brownouts when you don't even know you lost power say it goes down to 90 volts and can back up to 110 you might notice a fluctuation in your um, light power but that does terrible things to the lifespan of electronics sure so sure ups and surge protectors are, are really and surge protectors do a lot more than just protect from sir it kind of evens out it evens out the current go into your electronics right. and, and extends the life of electronics. It's a subtle little thing that happens that people don't really know. And it, we do whole house surge protection right. and that, that actually helps for everything. Right. W with all these uh, computers, TVs, all the, everything now is digital and everything is a lot more susceptible. You know, they're, they're not these big old gnarly motors like we used to have that you could drop in the water and then plug them back in. Right. You got to protect them now. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly like so. Rick, you do 
you're you primarily do the seal lock yeah, product. That's, that's that's exactly right. So over at uh, at Boyd and Wire, there's actually two companies that we have. So Frank, as you know uh, and have known for many years, uh, runs an AV company. He's also the uh, CEO of Sea Lock, Sea Lock Texas, and mm -hmm. I'm the president of Sea Lock Texas. And we focus uh, almost exclusively on outdoor entertainment that is weatherproofed or weather resistant. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about this in a little bit. We're actually starting to expand in other areas as well, like mm -hmm. treating electronics, sensitive electronics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I wanted to talk a whole lot about um, the indoor, what's going on on the indoor electronics as well, because there's a lot of new, particularly with all these new houses being built, but there's a lot of stuff going on with older homes that are trying to integrate into newer systems. And I get a lot of calls from people that are saying, well, I've got this, this TV that I spent a ton of money on 10 years ago, or I've got three TVs that I spent a ton of money on 10 years ago, and I'm trying to make them work with a new system. Right. And the, now the old ones had the little, the little uh they had the little red eye and the little laser the thing remote. the irs and all that kind of stuff has has that stuff changed <sighs> well that's a big can of worms there um there are some things that you can put adapters in and uh video scalers in to send a new modern high depth picture signal to a display. But at some point there's kind of a point of diminishing returns whereby the cost of the adapter and the image that you receive is not going to give you this a realistic uh, return on your investment. So at that point. Okay, so what you're telling me is I need to buy a new TV. Unfortunately, we have migrated and evolved <laughs> into the world of disposable TVs. Unfortunately, Frank, Frank you're so nice. A, you know that was a that, that was that was a really nice way of saying, thing. "Alex, buy a new TV." So if you're, I mean, because I mean, honestly, new TVs are a lot less expensive. It's it's ridiculous how yeah. cheap it, they are. And so when you're when you're running into new a new an old system versus a new system, so let's say that I'm, I'm, I've got, and I have this in my house, I've got a stack of remotes because mm -hmm. I've got a cable mm -hmm. and I have a TV right. and I've got Roku, <laughs> Roku. Maybe a DVD player. I don't even have that anymore. Who uses a DVD player, man? Hey, Alex, I don't need a we're DVD. We're talking about you, right? No, no. I've got a VHS. I've got a VCR, dude. There you go. That's still flashing twelve, right? I still, I still have my tapes from the eighties. You realize the young people today don't even know what VCRs are. Yeah, yeah I do. I don't have. I don't have any. We threw them away. We got rid of them. We don't. Okay. We don't watch them. Who needs a VCR? That's like a. That's like having a DVD in your car. Who needs that? <laughs> So yeah, we do, we do have a, a large percentage of our customer base that really appreciates those universal remotes. So um, it's 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 pretty much a given that we'll put at least one up to you know three or four universal remotes throughout the house. Can because, I get a universal remote that would take care of all three of those things for me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, relatively inexpensive. And, the and key, so I don't have to go through like in the old days when I had to hit four buttons to make it watch one movie. Right. You hit, you hit play TV, everything comes on, it goes to the right source, it gets in sync if you have surround sound, and then you're sending your audio command to your, say, your AV receiver, your change channel command to your cable box, and if you want to do anything with the TV, it'll send that command to the TV. Mm -hmm. So one remote, all the buttons stay in the same place, so you, you, you learn finger memory. You don't even have to look at it after a while. You know where the volume up and down is, yeah. the channel up and down. They'll label it for you. The, label it for forget you. about the finger memory. Well, they'll label it. But labeled. eventually you won't have you're to look at it. You're assuming I've got any memory and my finger memory. Finger memory. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks, so, Frank. So I have a question. I've seen this Samsung TV. You know, a lot of my clients now are taking out the old TV cabinet that was to either the left or the right of the fireplace right. and they're putting their 
TV on the fireplace. Right. So Samsung has a TV that actually looks like framed artwork. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's really amazing. It, it is really cool. Um, the the technology that's gone into it, they've, they've seen the need to migrate past just the image that's being reproduced from the screen to what it looks like when it's off. So there's there's multiple options. There used to be a company that, or probably still is a company, that actually makes a cover with a piece of artwork that you can choose that rolls down over your TV I've used when that it's before. off. But this Samsung TV, you mm -hmm. can upload any artwork you want. Mm -hmm. It could be um, uh, one of your children. Yeah. You Picasso. Can go, it's like I mean, a screensaver. Yeah. yeah. So when the TV, it, when you're not playing the TV, it looks like you have a piece of artwork over your fireplace. Mm -hmm. So like I... So, like, when my wife walks in the living room, I could have a portrait of me staring at her. You could. You <laughs> That'd could. be great, man. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. She'd keep the TV on all day. No, she would. <laughs> another, I, she would ruin it. <laughs> another really cool uh, technology that's come out is for people that have relatively high mantles mm -hmm. and relatively narrow um, living rooms mm -hmm. where you have a really bad neck angle. Yeah. They have a TV mount that you can actually, with about two fingers, pull it out and it comes out I've seen and that down too. I've seen that about too. two feet. Yeah. And when you bring the TV two feet closer, it looks significantly larger. Yeah. So you can go with a, a 55 or 60 inch or even a 65, and Amazing. by the time you lower it down. And another thing. A 65 inch TV isn't big? It depends on the size of you. If it's a great room, then So you're like okay. telling me you can make it look bigger so if you're just like going with only a 65 inch TV, you can make it look bigger. <laughs> Did you hear what you just said? Yeah, but it's, it's true. Well, you know, people, people are doing. Yeah. Reading glasses. You don't no need wonder anymore. none of us can see the red light <laughs> it, while we're driving. <laughs> and what's really cool is on the handle on that. Mount, it's your fault. It's right? temperature it's sensitive. Your guys. It's you guys. It's your all's fault. And I wish. Is it heavy to bring up and down? No, or, you, I mean, can, you can just... do it with, with two fingers and really? a thumb. So so it's very um, I've seen pictures of that. lightweight friendly. But the, the handle is actually temperature sensitive. So it's a dark purple. But when your fireplace is running, it starts getting hot. It changes to pink to let you know. Either move the TV up or turn the fireplace really? off. And this is like a, a device that's on the wall. It's it's yeah. it's the mantle mount yeah. is what it's called. Huh. And actually, you there's a little handlebar below the TV that you grab and it rotates down. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. So and how big yeah. and how big of a screen can you put on that? Seventy five probably. Seventy five. I don't know if it'll go bigger. Have <laughs> now you have to have a really big room for that, right? For a seventy five inch some screen. Have I mean how rooms. close do you want to well, I'm just an old country boy. I can only get such. Alex, so, this is Texas. Yeah, but everything is. Big how big in a Texas. TV can you put in a mobile home? I mean, you know, I can't. <laughs> I get too close to the TV. Well, get you one of those rear projections. <laughs> rear projection. <laughs> well, I'd to kill, man. I'd have to watch it outside. I'd have to watch it from out from my neighbor's my neighbor's <laughs> deck. <laughs> no, I, um. I seriously, I put one that was too big in, and and it, you know, if I get too close, it bothers. It's too close. Right. It's too big. Yeah, you have to make sure that your peripheral, you don't have to turn your head to see the whole screen. Right. So when we're sizing um, screens for home theaters, for instance, we need to know how far their first row of seats is. And what's, is there a rule? There's a, there's a calculator. What, what do you recommend, like your first row from a, you know, uh, at least 10 feet back. Yeah. And you measure from the head, right. not from the feet. Right. How about height wise? You, you, you don't want to have your, Right. I your, mean, you don't want to be level, tilted back all the time. Your eye level shouldn't be any higher than a third of the way through the screen. A third of the way. Okay. On on media rooms or. And you know, just an cameras. FYI, we have furniture now that we can put on stilts for media room. So the media seating. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a platform and you want to raise the back row, you know, we just raise it up like on a still. So we don't have to build platforms right, anymore. Right. Right. So do they vibrate? You can get them to vibrate. They have pillows. I mean, you, yep. Alex, in this day and age, those. if you I have just, money, man, if, I've got a, if you've got money, you can have I, anything you want. I want the I want the massage chair, yeah, the, magic the, fingers, fingers, chair. Right? the magic finger chair. And, <laughs> I mean, why not? 
thought you, you were know? talking about the ones with the butt kickers that actually vibrate when the sub. Yeah, that too. Oh, that too. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. ma- maybe the magic fingers and the you know whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, and so now um, you're out. You're you're. Let's talk about your seal lock uh, outdoor. T- uh, in, is it an entertainment system or is it just the TV or? Yeah, great question. So it, it is a system. We offer a number of different components to really take kind of that home theater experience outdoors, rain or shine. So we have TVs that range from 28 inches in size all the way to 75 inches in size, and they come in two different series. There's our weather resistant series that we call our Lanai series, and those are meant to go undercover. So in a high humidity environment, maybe salt air next to the ocean, those types of things that's not exposed to direct rain. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're going to have to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk more outdoor TVs and indoor TVs with Frank and Rick and Barbara. More of your home with Alex Guthrie in a few. Is that Chris doing all that writing? Yeah. What's he saying? He's just bored. Chris, you're bored. I'm glad you're in your truck where you can't write anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, Chris. Looks like we have a few other people that joined. Were you going to read all that, Frank? No, I'm the shaded part. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did hear about Witherspoon distilleries. I almost I got, almost, you almost got there, but Alex, we're going to have that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little arm between behind the back moment. But, but if awesome. you want, but if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to be a sponsor, I'll read it for you. Nice. Yeah, I'll do. A, I'll do one. Just put that headset on. You'll hear one going right now. I got like four dollars. <laughs> yes. yeah. So, how are you guys getting a lot of uh, a lot of business in the new home market? Yeah, it's everywhere from new home development, uh, especially on his side, obviously, and for ours as well. Um, certainly outdoor patio builders, pool builders, mm-hmm. you know, those types of things. Now that people realize that there's options in the market for outdoor TVs, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's really been been doing well for us. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Do you work with any particular builders, I mean, that use you over and over again? Yeah, we're starting to create relationships with Drees, um, yeah. Yeah. some other local custom home builders as well, and, you know, we're starting to increase our footprint from a sales perspective. You have to give me a card because we do a lot of... Hey, Steve, thanks for joining, buddy. It's g- glad to have you here. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Okay, so far. Frank, you're awesome. Yeah, you do. You look you look great, buddy. It's good to see you. Last time I saw you, you didn't have all that gray hair, though. I think last time I saw you, you had some hair. I I hope not. I hate hair. Hair sucks. <laughs> I got rid of mine as fast as I could. <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> Who needs so hair? Your next flight. Another but one trouble. of our smart fares. If expert I were a man, travel I agents find ridiculously oh, yeah. low prices for you because call smart fares today and get the best price on your next flight, flight. guarantee. Absolutely. Also, save up to 50% <laughs> off business and first class tickets. 800 Again, that's 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I'm here with my good friend Barbara Gilbert, co-hosting with me today. That's so. I'm so glad to have you here I'm today. I'm glad to be here. This has been so much fun. It has been a it lot fun. of fun. Yeah. We finally got Frank and Rick here, so we got someone to pick on. I know. So much. <laughs> You're doing fun. a good job of that. I too, love right? the low hanging fruit. I'm an easy target. Okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, Frank and I have been friends for many years, and uh, I picked on him the whole time. 
<laughs> and he, he still likes fishing. you, huh? He's still talking to me. Every still time. haven't gone fishing yet. Though. Yeah, right. Well, hey, I, you know, I'm doing radio these days, so the fish are safe. <laughs> I mean, they're safe usually anyway when I'm fishing. So, Rick, we were talking about uh, outdoor TVs and wa- right. weatherproof TVs. And in, in, in the old days, we would, uh, boy, we'd find all kinds of ways to, we build big fancy boxes and right. put the TVs in them. And, and basically what we were building was big places for bird nests and <laughs> beehives rats. and rats and, and stuff like that. And then right. buy a cheap TV and put it in there because it was going to be getting replaced the next uh, fall or whatever. And right. it's almost always just a place for for dad to put a TV for college football season. That's oh, generally right. what I put them in there for. But now, outdoor living areas are really an extension of the house. They are, for sure. Yeah. 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 So do you get a lot of your clients, do you do furniture for oh, outdoor? Absolutely. That, because it's a, it's not just yeah. folding chairs. Absolutely. And we, we actually <laughs> help design the space, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the outdoor kitchen, fireplace, and, uh-huh. you know, all of that. But, yeah, it's like living room furniture. Right. So when you when you do your your system, you're doing like a sound system. You're, yeah. you're not just sticking an old an old Sony, the, the old Sony TV that we're upgrading from out there anymore. You're putting right. a real sophisticated entertainment system out that's right well you know i think you hit the nail on the head you know the what it used to be five six years ago was you know maybe you take the old tv from your house you build a little cabinet outside and then dad would go sneak out there and you know watch the the college football cold game beer and a cigar precisely or warm scotch <laughs> or warm, scotch. Or what, uh, yeah. um, warm but, beer and a cigar yeah like barbara was saying you know these things have changed you know, we now have sophisticated outdoor kitchens yeah. with large grilling and cooking areas mm-hmm. and refrigerators and so on so people want to take their home theater experience or their living experience outside you know and in texas it's a great place to do that because we have nine to ten months of great weather mm-hmm. you know throughout the year but what was happening is, you know, just like you said, people would take a regular TV, they'd put it outside, and two months later, maybe six months later, if they were lucky, they'd be in the middle of a game, and, and then all of a sudden the TV goes out on them, you know, or maybe even the cable box or what have you. So that's why we got into this market. You know, we use uh, advanced nanotechnology to actually protect all of the circuit, all of the circuitry, the electrical connectors. Nanotechnology. Nanotechnology. Yeah. That like in, I've seen that in sci-fi movies, the, yeah. the little things, the little baby robot things that climb around yeah. inside the... We don't have any robots. No? No. Not that I've you know of. I've seen that. <laughs> Not that you know of. <laughs> That's scary stuff, man. <laughs> well, it, it, it's actually pretty neat stuff, though. You know, we have a, a patented uh, and, and um, just a very specific process that we follow to protect the circuit inside the TVs and it's invisible to the naked eye but if you imagine um, almost like a, a microscopic pool net that we put over the electronics a microscopic pool net pool net pool net right so when you go to skim your pool right you try to get all the bad stuff out of it but the water goes right through it in our case this microscopic net that we lay down over every facet allows the air to move back and forth across the circuit boards but the holes are so small that dust and water molecules can't get in. So mm. part of our demos, when we actually go to demo to some of our larger clients, we have a TV that we've built where we cut out the back of the television, we set it inside a plastic box, and then we fill it with water and turn it on. And we do our presentations with the well, TV wait, wait, underwater. Wait, wait a minute. Why can't they do that with my cell phone? Uh, <laughs> well, most cell phones now, if you buy a new iPhone you know, or in Samsung, are weather resistant. I dropped resistant. my little pad in the yeah. water. Yeah. And it's no good. It's no good. Poof. Yeah. We, we can treat those as well. So we use a similar technology to treat if cell phones, laptops. I have laptops, only that. known. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, hey, give us a call. We'll they, say that, they say if that ever happens, to put it in rice. I tried it. It didn't I work. Tried it. No, they didn't tell me you're not supposed to cook the rice first. <laughs> with, the phone, <laughs> with the phone in the water? Yeah, with the phone in the water. <laughs> right. Right. So... Yeah, so, you know, knowing that we can do that, we've then taken that same technology and that same process, and we've started to apply it to entire home theater environments. Mm. So we have sound bars with built-in subwoofers right. and surround sound or mock surround sound. Mm-hmm. We treat universal remotes, just like what Frank was talking about. One button turns on all your systems, turns off all your systems. 
and we treat it the same way. So we make those either weather resistant or weatherproof as well. So the, and, and the real trick to this system is you have to go to all the neighbors and you have to sell one to each neighbor <laughs> so they don't complain. Right. Or, you, or you invite them to the party. You invite them to the party. There you go. Yeah. Every party. Charge a cover fee. <laughs> so, question from yeah. a, how much more expensive is one of these TVs for outdoors than a regular TV? That's a great question. That is a great oh, question. Thank you. Um, so, you know, if we look at, I'm going to answer this in a little bit of a roundabout way. Sure. There's two ways that you can He's look at He's dodging the question. I'm not. I'm going to go right might. after I, it. I, I thought he might. A thorough answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can look at this in the comparison of how many outdoor TVs or how many non-outdoor TVs would I replace in a period of, say, two to three years. Mm -hmm. Um, our TV is about that same cost, but it okay. comes with of the three long. TVs of the three TVs. Okay, right. So you know, if you go to your local harm, uh, local electronics place, it's going to cost you about three hundred dollars or so to buy a, a medium-sized sure. TV. Um, ours are about roughly three. We're going to take cost. a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have a little bit more outdoor TVs and indoor stuff. You're listening to your home with Alex Guthrie. We'll be right back. You know, that price is not really bad. I mean, no. for what you're getting, you know, I... Are you I, familiar I, with the sun price? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, that, that, so they're way up here. Yeah. Yeah, that was and, the second part of that answer. Right. Yeah. we're about okay. a third of the cost of really? our competitors. So a third, depending awesome. on the size. Right. That's awesome. <sighs> yeah, Sierra is a company. They make a TV that they sell for $20,000 in a uh, TV. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when... You remember when... Uh, uh, how one name of Liquid Crystal was just uh, flat screen TVs first came out mm -hmm. in a forty a plasma. Mm -hmm. plasma was yeah. a forty inch plasma was twenty thousand freaking dollars and yeah. I remember one of my clients bought like four or five of them holy cow Highland Park and I was like wow look at that thing mm -hmm. I had, and uh, now you can't give them away no, no. I had a dealership. they're too sick nobody wants them it's a dealership I did nine fifty inch plasmas they were five grand a piece. <laughs> And now they sell 105 inch LED TVs. I mean, imagine that. They're so big, they actually have a foot, like a foot stand on it. You have to set them on the ground. Oh, boy. They're nuts. It's crazy, oh, isn't it? They're nuts. Uh, everything is outdated within a couple of years. Any, any kind of electronics. Yeah. You know, after a couple of years, there's always something better. Okay. Um, my, my clock's not up. I'm having to look at the little clock in the screen. 1231. Yeah. So I'm not able to. There's your readers. I can't, I can't see that with these. Yeah. That's all right. He needs his clock. <laughs> they have one out there they're supposed to have up? Uh, no, it's on. The, it's supposed to be on the screen. It's okay. No big deal. Do we have any new people that you have to say hi no, to? No. My vote, Steve Lawton. Hello, Steve Lawton. Anyway, um, we will. Where do we? What? What else do you guys want to talk about? You got a whole page full. We've got yeah, to, five pages of stuff. Well, we don't want to spend. A whole, no, I know. I know. Yeah, you know, I. I think. Um, let's see. We have. You've actually asked a lot of the key questions yeah, I had down okay. in here. Okay. All right. So are you doing a lot with smart homes? I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, even automating window systems, and, you know, window shades and all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's amazing how expensive that is, too. It depends on what type of system you use. Yeah. There are some really? less expensive systems that we do a lot of. That would be maybe a good thing to talk about, okay. too. Because we, we get a lot of requests for that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do just like one more short question on C-Lock, and then we'll pass it over to Frank. Okay. Do you want to do that? Cool. Okay. I'm saying yes, like I have control of this. Okay. I'm like, yeah. You are the woman in the crowd. So I know, yeah, right? She's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think that's a great idea. That's a plan. <laughs> well, there's so much to cover in with what you do. Right. I mean, it's very, there's so much. I, I could think of a million questions, you know, to ask. Well, if there's one thing that we, I would like to... Am I what? Totally submerged underwater TV. Totally that is a great question. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. It's funny because one of our sample 
special request was a TV <laughs> in the bottom of a pool. Let's do no it. Yeah, let's do that. We'll answer that oh, for sure. Fun. And price was no object. Alex Guthrie is your guy. What a bad rhyme. The phone lines are open at 214-810-TALK. That's 214-810-TALK. Relax your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We are back. We got a great Facebook question from Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Can you do a totally submerged underwater TV? That is a great question because, you know, last time I dropped my TV in the pool, it just didn't work. <laughs> you can't let the magic smoke out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that is a great question. So uh, the, the short answer is yes. In fact, uh, I think this was about two months ago, we had a, a, a potential customer of ours reach out to us and said, hey, listen, I'm building a mansion in Miami. Money is no object. I want to have a TV underwater. So when I'm swimming underwater, I want to be able to watch it. Now, I wouldn't have thought in a million years there would be a market for that today, but apparently <laughs> there is. Uh, so How long can he hold his breath? Yeah. Maybe he has scuba gear. He's scuba Steve. Could be. Yeah. Um, so the, the answer is yes. You know, we would use a lot of the same techniques and uh, the same nano coating technology that we talked about a few moments ago to treat the insides of that. Now, something like that, you have to deal with immense levels of pressures, right? You know, if you've ever dove to the bottom of a pool, you know, your ears want to pop. That's all pressure that's put on that TV. So in that case, we'd have to build a custom you know, probably like a titanium or an aluminum type enclosure for that with a very specialized glass to seal it off. You know, in those, um, like gangster movies, yeah, when someone's in the bathtub and they drop a TV in there, and they electrocute them, and then, yeah. you know, and they yeah. electrocute them. You could play a really ugly joke on somebody with one of your TVs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new mafia hit song, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Tell me where the money is. Uh, <laughs> it used to be a toaster. Now we're dropping yeah, in TV. Yeah, apparently. what the heck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, uh, so you can actually put a TV submerged, and, and why a person would do that, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you <laughs> Maybe come, just to do it. Yeah, I, well, I think sometimes I think when you so. have that kind of money, right? Yeah. You just know, because? Just, just to go to that next level. That was a great question. That really <laughs> that was is a great, great question. question. <laughs> and if you want to buy one, let us know. We'll, uh, we'll take care of you. <laughs> so the cost of one of these systems is about three times replacement cost for a normal TV. For an inexpensive TV, if an you buy like a no-name brand uh, type TV. A no-name brand. Like when you were at, buying your disposable ones because you knew they weren't going to at, last very long. At Christmas time when they're on sale for half price. There you go. No, Black, yeah. Black Friday. Black Friday, <laughs> right, or Cyber Monday. Um, our, our TVs currently range anywhere between $780 to just over $7,000. Depending on size? Depending on size and various different options that come with it and whether or not they're weather resistant or weather proof. So the weather proof TVs, you could literally hang on the side of your garage. It could be in direct sunlight. It could get rained on 24-7. You know, you can live in Louisiana, and this thing can just get pommeled by the rain. So if you have a, a sunlight, would be an issue typically outside. So would you have a LED or a, what, what kind of a, a different type of screen? It's, it's a really good question. So a lot of other manufacturers of outdoor TVs put a TV inside a box, and they seal it. And that poses a whole series of problems, one of the worst being glare because it's smooth glass. The TVs that we use have native anti-reflective screens on them, and we don't mess with that. So in addition to that, we do full motion mounts, kind of like the, the mount where Frank was talking about right, pulling right. it over the fireplace. These can be pulled directly out, tilted, rotated. So you, you can know. adjust it to Correct. the light? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. very cool. Very yeah. cool. It is. But, but not just regular mounts. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's yeah. Good point. Thank you, Frank. So, so all of our mounts are outdoor rated. They're stainless steel. We use uh, special components inside them. So, mm -hmm. you know, five, ten, fifteen years from now, they look and and act just like they did when you first wow. bought them. That's very awesome. That is great. Very awesome. That is great. Yeah. So, I'm just wondering now, getting back to indoor, 
a little bit. So do you do automated window treatments, you know, shades that go up and, and that type of thing as well? We do. Do you Absolutely. do everything, make the whole house smart? People right. want smart houses, like genius houses. Well, yes, but they don't want them to be difficult. That's correct. Because yeah. the number one request I get by far is it has to be easy to use. Right. And I totally get that because I don't want to have to go home from a hard day at work and have to try to remember something or learn something new. And so if I can use a relatively simple interface, either in my hand or on the wall or on my phone, or preferably have the ability to do any of the above, mm -hmm. And it's got the same interface, which means it looks the same, it operates the same, mm -hmm. you push the same buttons no matter which way you're doing mm -hmm. it. Then I can control things manually, like say, um, uh, you know, and you press, the button on your, you press the button on your key fob, you want to start your engine when it's cold outside. Okay, so you can do things manually, like lock the front door, mm -hmm. turn the thermostat up and down from your phone or from the keypad. But you can also set rules whereby I want my front porch lights and my landscape lights to come on at 30 minutes before sunset. And I can either have them run for two hours or three hours, mm -hmm. or I can have them run until 11 o'clock at night. Now you program all this for the person, right? Mm -hmm. when, once you install it, you ask all the questions and you get everything programmed so that they don't have to worry about that part of it. Right. For but the most part, right? We will absolutely work with them to configure it exactly okay. to their likings, and then we come back another month to see what their living patterns have developed. Because I I'm, I laugh at when I see these shades. So we have like like let's say we do in a high rise, and we, it's all windows, and they have you know solar shades, and they press the button, and they all go up the same exact amount, you know, at the same time. I'm like, who programmed that, and how did they do that? Uh, I mean, it's scary to me when I look at that because I'm thinking if that's something that I have to do. Uh-uh, those shades are not going to be, there's going to be a lot of you know, inches in between them. But so, now you can do pretty much everything off your cell phone. Right. They I have, mean, you can control your entire house off of it. You can. And the cool thing about home automation is not the fact that you can do it manually, but the fact that it can do things automatically for you. Right. right. You can still do everything manually, mm -hmm. but over time you get tired of doing this every time. Right. And so if you can say every time when I drive up it. and I hit my garage door opener, I want to trail the last open to the rest right. of my house. Or if I get, say, I'm coming home, I'm two miles from my house, I want my thermostat to drop down five degrees. You can program any of those activities to happen automatically, and that's where the automation part comes mm -hmm. in. So. So I have to tell you this, too, because it just blew my mind the first time. So we had this client that we were doing his whole house, and he was overseas a lot. So I'd send him a text, and I'd say, we're coming over. I'm meeting so-and-so at the house today. He'd say, okay, what temperature do you want the thermostat at, and what type of music do you want? <laughs> and he would turn the lights on, and I'd come in, and the house would be perfectly cool. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, from overseas, no matter where you are, you can do it. I want to uh... – find out from you about voice recognition in houses I mean, can you go in now and you should be able to I guess but I had a lady call me and ask because she was blind and she wanted to know about voice recognition for controlling a thermostat in her house mm -hmm. can you do that in yep. place in place of all I mean you can do it with everything else on your computer and your phone you sure can so you can program all this for just voice recognition. So I could just walk in and say, turn on the living room lights. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you've got, you can tie all this into like your, maybe your security camera or whatever. You can literally, yeah. it, you could be on the other side of the world watching your phone and yeah. controlling your house. Yeah. yeah. And somebody walks up to your front door, you can talk to them. Right. If it's a friend, you can unlock the door. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about passing out keys to neighbors anymore or giving them a code. Or if your kids lose a key or they're coming home early or whatever. It's I no mean, fun it's just... being a kid anymore. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> you want to break the window and go in, huh? It used to be fun. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I've actually had clients call me up and say, uh, I need you to have someone come over. I had a, and a big executive client of mine, I had to break the window because 
my wife forgot to leave me the key or whatever. And, you know, <laughs> and that's what you'd love doing as a kid. You didn't want this automated thing. You wanted to break that. Window I didn't want, in. if I was, I wouldn't want to be a kid anymore with all this automatic stuff, man. I had too much fun sneaking in and out. I mean, it was fun. It was part of the deal, man. <laughs> you got away anymore. with it. Yeah, I know. You, know. you jumped off the roof, landed in the trash can and, well, that you, happened. With your Superman cape on. Yeah. No, I was a teenager, dude. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Superman. Superman was a wimp. I like Spidey myself. <laughs> oh, my God. So automatic, uh, we've got now, we've got the voice recognition. We've got biometrics, which is a big deal now. Or right. I guess it's, I guess, voice recognition, biometrics. Uh, biometrics is really just starting to take uh, a big part of it now where you would go in for, you don't use a key, you use your thumb mm -hmm. to unlock your door. Uh, you you can kind of do that on everything now. You, you do it on your phone to unlock your phone. Are you using much of that? Not really. Uh, we have used it for some commercial customers because of the, the price point. Mm -hmm. um, and... There are still some unreliability in it because hands are dirty, you get cut. I see. Um, things like that. Okay. Wi Fi is a, you're, are you having a hardwire things these days or, or is the Wi Fi, the radio frequency type stuff dominating all of these electronics? We actually do a, a, a lot of overlap. Because for speed, reliability, and security, hardwired is always going to be your best solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, we always augment that with wireless coverage throughout mm -hmm. the whole home or the whole office space. But the thing about uh, wireless is the more components and more devices you have using up that wireless bandwidth, the slower your speeds are going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. So that makes sense. Yeah, I. I and they're but they're changing the wiring now you know you're not using we were using that old black cable stuff and now even the cable companies i had them out to my house recently and they're all using is it cat six cat six is, a, is and that's just a different type of the i guess it just has different wires in it or thicker better twist ratios and better noise um interference cancellation but, you know, we did a house, and I, I, I can't remember if you worked on it or not for me. I'm sorry, Frank. I don't remember <laughs> if you did it. Uh, but we had, um, we had a wireless TV. She had a wireless TV. And she had, we were all excited about it. It was one, maybe one of the first ones we had in this area. At least the guy that put it in, he was all excited. And we turned it on, it wouldn't work because of, of the interference there was too much interference. Yeah. Or wireless things like that different have, has that all improved? I mean, are wireless TVs I don't have one. I don't know if there it has that are you still having problems with things like that with Wi Fi is my question. It's not near as rampant because the Electronic Industry Association has continued to develop higher and higher standards, uh changed frequencies that are being used to con communicate um wirelessly. Um, and the the components that are being manufactured are of a higher quality, and the FCC has allowed them to increase their power uh, output, as well as the devices receiving them have better filters to to separate the signal from the noise. I have a client that uh, did a, a green school, and one of the things that they were really worried about were the effects of the signals that were coming out from doing wireless the i don't know what they're called the electronic signals that were coming out and getting in people's bodies electromagnetic interference yeah. okay is that a, a real concern i mean can that be harming people i mean even they're talking about even signals from cell phones there's uh there's a lot of argument on both sides of that uh so is anybody asking you to shield their equipment for that type of thing? No, I haven't had that request. Uh, I know that that for a long time they wouldn't build houses near power lines, mm -hmm. uh, and now they've started building houses closer to power lines. 
So I'm really not 100 percent sure. I'm can pretty I, sure I, that's why I my hair. About... I think that's why my hair fell out. I lived under some power lines, but I did get smarter. Can I talk about that a little bit? Yeah. You know, I'm Reed Green certified. No, so I that did not means know I understand that. how to remodel or even build a home, making it, um, you know, uh, sustainable and healthy. Healthy is a big thing. So out of your outdoor air, your office air, you know, if you work in an office building or your home air, which do you think is the most toxic? The indoor air. Your home air. Yeah. And, you know, the reason is because of all the electronics and so on. But you have off-gassing from all the texture that's right. on the wall. You have, you know, at PVC is one of the most, you know, uh, offensive things because it, it's very unhealthy for you. So, you know. So I, I can tell my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the PVC. You probably can. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Barbara. I needed some help with that one. So I'm just saying, you know, something's going to get you. Thank you. I, I, I was just giving you a hard time. I know you were. We're going to be back in a few minutes. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we're going to make a ton of money. We'll be back in a few minutes with your home with Alex Guthrie. Thanks for listening. There. Now we're here. Mm hmm. Does that mean we're done? 1250? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not done. I'm not done either. You can leave if you want, Frank. <laughs> I don't want you to oh. leave, Frank. Don't leave. No, I, got, I got 20 more minutes to talk stuff. We're here. still going. Well, I mean, I was just about to get into my smelly feet routine. You haven't heard that one yet. Mm -hmm. Mary, Mary and Kevin Brookshire are listening now. They're very good friends of mine, Mary and Kevin Brookshire. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Send us a question. They've got this great place out at the lake, and they need an outdoor TV. They go. need oh, one. Perfect. They need perfect. one outdoor, outside. They've got this deck. It looks right. At, it's like 100 feet right off of Lake Fork. Wow. It, the waves splash uh, it's awesome oh, and it faces east and oh, the, nice. they get every sunrise it is incredible wow. but today it's freezing cold <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you want to talk about indoor I yeah mean, what do you guys got home, what's on your home, list do you want to go or i mean you can go or you can stay we're going to have a uh, just a, a couple more minutes and then we're going to just do a little wind down and 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 rock well, what's the, what's at the very end there it was really just a if you want to find out more about our products how do you find out about us? yeah well, let's do that we'll just kind of close out with that sure. and then i'll um uh well i have some more stuff and mm -hmm. farmer and i have a couple more things we can cover you do good man thanks frank you're a star um, He's a okay, stud. I believe you. If you say so. <laughs> He's a radio like stud. <laughs> he finally said something nice, though. Right? I mean, instead of picking on you all the time. I feel the love. I you love guy. Frankie. I know. We go. Except good. for finding out jobs he hadn't been using me on, I don't feel the love now. I'd like somebody to call me and need me for something. <laughs> all right. Fine. Um, I'll I guess you can wash his feet or something. Ooh. Is you do that at you do that at the homeless. Service. Don't you do that at the homeless shelter? Is that what they do <laughs> yeah. down there? The Christian homeless shelter? Yeah. If I've washed Frank's feet, it's because he's in a real bad place. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in a real bad place. And I'm down there helping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we want to ask more questions, Look I mean it's a day. We can train. Stay for a little bit longer. And you know it's you. hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020. Or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. Welcome back to your home. Gotcha. You got me. <laughs> Usually when Phil points at me like that, it means it's time to be a star again. <laughs> he got me that time. <laughs> nope.
Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We're back for real this time. We're here with Rick Webster, Frank Boyd of Boyd on a Wire. So how do people get in touch with you if they want one of your fabulous TVs or some of Frank's fabulous knowledge and talent inside their house? Uh, good question. Rock and roll. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so to get one of our outdoor TVs or any of our outdoor entertainment systems, you can go to www.celoctx.com. That's S-E-A-L-O-C-T-X.com. Or you can call us at 972-525-9800. And for Boyd on a Wire, you can go to www.boydonawire.com. That's B O Y D on a wire.com and you can call us at 972-525-9700. You know, Frank was wondering why I haven't called him in a while. And it's because I kept trying to get bird on a wire. I don't know why <laughs> I keep making that mistake. <laughs> Wasn't that like a movie or something? I think it was. Yeah. I think it was. Movies. I'm sorry, Frank. Mel Gibson and Goldie Hawn. Oh yeah. Wow. That's right. That's right. Wow. All this time. Good memory. <laughs> I was looking for a name. I was looking for a name uh, when I started my company back in 99. And I, I wanted to let people know that I'm really invested in the company. Cause I wanted to put my name out there, not for arrogance, but just to know that I'm standing behind it and and that sort of thing, family business. And so then I came across the, the movie Bird on a Wire and I thought, hmm, boy, on a wire. <laughs> okay, that makes sense because it jives with kind of what we do, you know, a lot of cabling. Uh, infrastructure, installations, that sort of thing. Well, it makes so, perfect sense. And yeah. it's pretty memorable. Yeah, a lot of yeah. it is. I have remembered it over the years. Unless you're a movie buff, that. and then you think it's bird on a wire. <laughs> but, no, I, I really enjoyed you guys. It was really a lot of fun. I really do appreciate it. And um, we, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some more stuff together. And, and, and it, it was great information. And, you know, it's what's amazing is how far they've come with all this technology that is not having to take the old TV and sticking it out in the yard anymore. Right. And the, th and the thing is, the cost of them, the, the cost of the equipment has gotten, it's so much more affordable. And the investment that people are making into their outdoor living areas, it's worth it. I mean, it's just another, really, it's, I'm saying just another couple of grand or a, a few thousand dollars, but at the amount of money people are spending on these things, you're spending a hundred, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars on one of these outdoor living areas. It's easy. an extension of your home. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Definitely it's is a lifestyle. lifestyle. You know, people are even putting retractable doors mm -hmm. into the house to open the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's amazing what a huge industry it's become. Well, and we're, I mean, it, seriously, you could have a smaller home footprint in, yeah. in, a, in an outdoor living area, okay. and in an area like ours, you have so you almost have year-round use of it. Yeah, right. and we, they've they've developed all sorts of ways that you can use it, even in cold mm -hmm. and hot weather. Sure. Of course, there's nothing like a swimming pool. <laughs> 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 okay, Miss Barbara. Yes, sir. All right, we were talking about kitchens, and the uh, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about was some of the appliances. I've lost track of my piece of paper. Well, here. we, we were talking the, about the induction. The induction and steam. Oh, now I have a steam oven. Now, Do you? you would think that I'm this huge cook, and I'm not. However, I was, Jen Eyre sent me up to their headquarters and demonstrated a lot of their newer items and I was just amazed they cooked cream brulee and salmon in a, in steam, a, in a steam. same oven in the same oven a steam oven really and there was no flavor transfer really wow. yes and everything that they cooked is that, that because steam, of the wine you had before the this the <laughs> that that helped but no I, I will tell you the reason helps me every time with that flavor transfer the, I like fishy creme brulee. I, you know, it's <laughs> just saying. The steam actually encapsulates the food. So it keeps it healthy. You know, mm -hmm. it, it keeps the vitamins, all the nutrients in, but it also prevents the um, 
you know, the flavor transfer. So I've made in my steam oven, I've made you know, corn on the cob and broccoli and a bunch of vegetables, and they really, really are delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, on the downside, steam oven comes with this huge, thick sponge, and you really have to wipe the whole thing down when you get done because every there's time. steam every time. I didn't realize they didn't show us that at Gen Air. So, you know, what happens if you don't? Does, well, does it make a big, globby mess? Well, You'll have water uh -huh. you know, at, at, at with, the bottom. With lots of yeah, yeah. bio yeah, messy you would, stuff. You would. Yeah. And the other important thing with a steam oven is that you want to make sure it has its own reservoir. You don't want it to be hooked up to um, you know, a water supply because you always want fresh water going in there. Say you don't use it for two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you turn on the water. Now you're cooking with water that's just been sitting in the pipes a while. Oh, so, you know, when it has its, its own reservoir, yeah. you feel it. But the nice thing is you can cook. It becomes a convection oven as well. Huh. So you can cook with or without the steam. Wow. Yeah. That is great I, information. I love, it. I love it. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think we're at the end of the road here. It's been a great show. Thank I've enjoyed you. it. Thank I've you for having some, thanks me. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Mr. Brown. Thank you for all your help. We've had a lot of fun today. Next week, I'll be back. You've been listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Have a great week.